and the value of wood, uh, of which I'm very grateful. Uh, and Sally's wood, I do want to mention. Uh, I'm not an academic, but and immediately one thing is great. That means you actually have some real experience. Um, but I'm a nurse. This wonderful child that died of Alzheimer's in September 2012. Nothing in my training or nursing career could prepare me for the Chinese led. Uh, which I've gone through the Montana medical training, including my junior jobs at Queen's Square, without ever knowing what personhood it is, which um, um, uh, uh, Darren does beautifully. Uh, I can't see Darren for it, but uh, I talk about breaking down the silos with the costume, uh, whichever party moves towards integrated health nursing care, it, we have to break down the institutional barriers, especially in dementia care. And I'll leave the map there. But uh, in fact, I went through my medical training, albeit it was very short, uh, without knowing what person it was, uh, is a bit uh, travesty, really. So, I'm not going to read out the contents of the book, that would be boring. But <laughs> there is an emphasis on activities, design, innovation, uh, even my interest in uh, neurology, uh, decision making, communication, uh, environments, and uh, dementia friendly communities. So I'm going to sort of aim to. Uh, land this plane on the runway at the end of part one, sounding a bit like Alan Partridge now, <laughs> winding up a TV show, um, uh, which is sort of coming up to you, 10 past four. So I'm to, to edge towards the number of it, which is what is well-being, what is personhood, uh, what is dementia. Actually, in, in management land, uh, there's a bit of a I don't know whether it's the effect of um, what's happened. Uh, somebody joked that David Nicholson uh, will be bringing management expertise to Mark Spencer's. An issue here about values based commission, everything has been done thus far in the interest on activity. Um, how much activity? Generate. There's now more of a fast cause values, having the right outcomes, and uh, not surprisingly, well being is a uh, valid outcome. Um, and the question is, how do you measure it, etc. But uh, that's just one thing. Uh, we're edging towards a narrative of outcomes, not outputs. Now, I'm not uh, going to uh, make this into a uh, sort of ridiculous soundbite of a former. Uh, Labour leader, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean, uh, especially its relevance to dementia care. Now, uh, this slide is just to emphasise that there's been quite a lot of uh, rumpus in the academic literature about uh, what well being is. People can't decide on it. People can't even decide on how to spell it. Uh, <laughs> anything else. Uh, there were real problems. There's meant to be a genetic component. Uh, there meant to be an environmental component. There are kind of things you can do to enhance your well-being and other people's well-being. Uh, but uh, if you get a uh, moment, uh, Google well-being, how to measure it, you will find thousands and thousands of So here's a diagram of, in my book, of particular way of schematizing well-being. Uh, there's meant to be a difference between subjective and objective well-being. It's all a bit fuzzy, not quite right. Uh, it's in the book. I person. Uh, this is actually from Urban Dictionary. It's the idea that somebody's born with headphones from their iPod in the womb. 
um, someone on stage on was the subject to Apple merchandising. Um, uh, I'll just say that as a bit of light relief for me and Kate Swaffer, who is the one person who probably does read uh, some of my tweets. I don't know if you both love But this is not a lot from that. Tom Kippert, 1937 to 1998, a wonderful man uh, who basically, uh, he got his as well, as many do, uh, but put um, a person who was on the map, from um, Dementia Care Mapping, from a Batridge group. Uh, uh, that's a chapter on personhood is obviously a pivotal part of my book. And personhood, not just for persons with dementia, but their friends, family, people caring for them. Uh, and as the policy moves for shared decision making, this does also make sense for my point of view. Uh, Andrew Sutcliffe is a friend of ours. Um, uh, who was at SCIE, now uh, the Chief Inspector of Social Care. Uh, her unit does some wonderful stuff on personalization. Uh, so it's been a plank of policy suddenly. For person care, uh, there was some barney yesterday in the papers about whether the local authorities can have the money for it, etc. But integrated care in some form will be after the next election on May the 8th, some 2015, whoever wins it. And individualized budgets, personal, personal, personalized budgets, personal health budgets, personal budgets, that's a big uh, move effort. Uh, uh, perhaps the two narratives of person-centered care shouldn't be mixed up with the, well, the consumer's view of you holding your own checkbook to buy care from the private sector. Obviously, I don't know into any of that in the book. You'd be happy to know. Uh, is to be part of my the Stroud and the Alzheimer's Disease Association International have done this ring, outer ring and inner ring of components of well-being. And it might be that the outer ring encompasses the sort of super national uh, uber policy directors of what well-being is about. And um, um, Super Banerjee, who was the dementia lead before Asperger's, uh, was a big uh, driver behind this. Um, uh, is this is a book. I do want to mention a down name in Gunnersburg, uh, which is awful that uh, this is one uh, pathways um, sorry, Pathways to Dementia Diagnosis, Dementia Partnerships. Uh, rather, a business side, try not to worry about that, but the issue is the concerns often not taken seriously. That's often described, this is from Southwest England, um, and uh, Donna is on Twitter, please do find a very bright, nice lady. Uh, some keep this funny out and open views toward diagnosis or not. Um, there's a whole policy issue about why diagnosis rates in the UK, England, may be poor. And in my experience in getting post-diagnosis support, and uh, the point about this, there's, um, the system somehow, it do know, feels on the report, is to, to get up towards generating anxiety where people just left hanging on for things to happen, like uh, uh, diagnosis to be made, then referred to the Excellent Memory Assessment Services, MAS, and then something goes wrong uh, in that, uh, I don't know, the staff are very bright, very motivated, but uh, patient family get anxious that nothing seems to happen, they get stressed. And this report uh, on the founded of Google was a way of just uh, encouraging people to gather out together about how we can better organize care as part of a massive literature on, uh, on the diagnosis of dementia. Uh, so I'm not straight, lesbian, gay, 
does have some gender insights um, personally. And the issue about how we can bring forward people for diagnosis with dementia is a very important one because people have their own uh, differences, uh, whether Asian, black, um, a gypsy traveler, and there are issues about why diagnosis rates may have gone wrong in certain areas of war. A uh, particular issue about this one, by the way, is that, um, and it's on Town's down, blog, uh, uh, but it's been found out that often the first interaction of a LBGT person with the health service to get a diagnosis of dementia involves some sort of outing of sexuality. And it's been likely discovered that the system can be overly anti-homosexual or quite heterosexism, sexist in its outlook. In other words, geared up to assuming the dementia service should be run from a uh, heterosexual point of view. So each one of these issues, debates, has to be had uh, by people. Uh, for more knowledgeable than me, uh, but here's one of them. And it, of course, it fits into my term uh, fuss of encouraging personhood. Uh, I'm not going to generally encourage audience participation, but on this occasion, I would like to make an exception. Uh, I would like to ask Jill, uh, Jill, it's a friend of mine, um, uh, well, that's sad to say, before Jill says something, this has been a massive success in changing the frames of reference of dementia care so the system is more geared up and listening to what people actually want. Jill, do you want if you uh, uh, explain your, how you brought in, how you did the app, and uh, what's uh, the background to it? And, uh, what you're doing with it. Uh, if you can, in all of one minute. Well, really. yeah. I, I think perhaps to start with the slide, and I don't know who was more excited when Shibby and I met up last summer, and he'd been really interested in whose shoes and um, hadn't actually seen them at all. And so we, we, we met up, and it was the day that we met Kate Swaffer, and there was being quite a popular blog around the <coughs> Imagine You Friends blog. So that was all that same day. But basically, when I um, started to show Shibby the tool, and um, he realised to what extent this is my path to personalisation. So it's, for those who don't know, it's a board game where you work together to try and get people, um, whether they're managers, whether they're providers, whether they're um, people with dementia or people with, with certain health, health and social care needs, um, carers, frontline staff, all working together and all um, actually linking up as people rather than in their roles. So that's what the kind of who shoots tool is about. But as a game, you're working together to build this path to personalisation. And Shibley and I really sort of made this very strong connection when we realised that the words on my game match so closely to the chapter headings in your book. Yeah. And I was just thrilled to bits that we sort of made that connection almost just in time in terms of the book's publishing. Of cycle. course, I never wrote the nice guns. And <laughs> I didn't realise it was a perfect match, and um, you can see about how they line up really. In uh, if you look up Jill Phillips, who shoes social movement in the line index, you'll find it there. But it's um, really uh, a sort of cordial and nick of tone. Uh, <laughs> and so I think it's just fair to say the original pathway came from the putting people first agenda and I've modified it with the Think Local Act personal mm -hmm. team around the Making It Real agenda. It's not, it's not there, so they've got 10 different cross-cutting themes. These were um, putting them together into my kind of seven final ones, because I've got seven spaces on the board that seem to work. But that was the story behind it, isn't it? Is that what you wanted? Uh, perfect, Jill. Thank <laughs> you so much. And also... I'm thrilled to bits. And everything in the room is uh, included in your book. Um, with the section of the book, it's on a rather um, unusual chapter on personhood. Uh, if you're true to the of Kitwood, um, you'll find I start with Kitwood, um, then go on 
I didn't mention the people, but to talk about how person care, I talk about uh, power is personal decision and Jill's work. And I think it's quite a clever chapter, but I'll let you be in the chapter. Now, um, that is what we'll talk today about me. And uh, it's just a point, uh, I don't think anyone has uh, any particular authority or uh, or that image of how people living with it, or people who know, people who live in it, but they can't see. Uh, I'll sort of up to my ears with people who are um, proffering beliefs and ideas about what they think is important. Normally they have some sort of agenda behind it. Uh, I'm not going to go on to who benefits from certain strands of policy. But uh, anyway, uh, the what I've spoken about is trying to see the world of increase, not to noise, trying to find a signal there, because there is one, and it's very important. And that signal is people uh, with dementia, their carers, people who experience it uh, uh, straight up. Um, that really matters. Uh, do not get distracted by all the other stuff going on. Um, uh, next time you see Lucy, who's also in the room somewhere. No. Uh, Lucy will bring to you some badges and try and catch Lucy. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> 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 thanks, thanks to Dr. Minal Jawad, the Dementia Lead, uh, for uh, some of this as well. Uh, Here's the bad. You, you, you will there. see in due course. Mm -hmm. Look what you could have won. This is a diagnosis. Uh, uh, thanks to John who uh, mentioned me in his uh, chapter on dementia, not me obviously, in my paper. There are about 100 different causes of dementia. Hence my problems with the idea that we have a single cure for it uh, that's killed uh, the uh, bombshell, what's it called? Well, not bombshell, that's that is Ali Podrich. And uh, uh, war, battle, Armageddon, uh, it goes on. Flood, tide, actually, normally use the word turn tide, so I'm stuck on this one. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, uh, there is a very complicated a diagnosis made should be, I think all of it has to be done for us, but not so much that people um, never get a diagnosis in a timely fashion. The diagnosis uh, has moved towards uh, timely. Peter Corbyn, actually, much as he won't admit it, was, has been a major uh, cause and the obviously alcove and uh, uh, that arm of strategy of research. Uh, but, uh, I want to agitate her, but uh, Dr. Peter Gordon of Scotland has been quite a uh, belligerent in making <laughs> sure that uh, we get the terminology right. The idea, as as Burns, you mean, is that the diagnosis has to be timely uh, for a uh, wide uh, stage in life for a person. Uh, I looked up. Dr. Peter called the thunder and look, one and a half million hits. What can I be? Can you read the good life of the news of the spout? But anyway, uh, the issue was, I was actually looking into this paper. The idea that about 20% of people who are told they have dementia don't have dementia. And likewise, there's a proportionally half of people who and never have a uh, diagnosis of dementia, who amazingly have neuropathological features of dementia post mortem. And, but there's an issue here is that in upping the diagnosis rates, uh, that we might inadvertently encourage lots of false diagnoses. And uh, the issue is obviously about uh, potential harms, uh, about uh, wrong diagnosis can be made, uh, but I haven't just written a book on what the good can be done from a diagnosis. For the hell of it, um, uh, I believe that the correct diagnosis um, should and could be useful. Uh, but Peter, you know, read a piece of stuff uh, 
um, you form my BMG passport on my routine and routine mm -hmm. private. Uh, Brosham showed us in 1979, and that was um, nearly 30 years old, uh, has its four pivotal pillars of medical ethics autonomy, uh, you mustn't find person has uh, no right to make decisions about themselves, doing good, not doing any harm, and justice. And these um, tend to get obscured, but obviously should be an ongoing thread, whatever policy we have. Because these are, these have been unsound textbook principles of medical ethics. So I'm going to uh, go out, I work for time, but I would like to, at this point, show you Peter's uh, video. Hi, Shipley. You would be right. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Saturday when I come down to London for a book launch. Um, and I'm going to meet so many uh, lovely folk I know. Um, it's a super book. A bit well with tonight, Chuck. Um, I suspect it's going to be widely read and people will understand just what a contribution it is to uh, the world. Please, do the thing I've done. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to ask you back again more than I thought. Those approach. Yeah, I recently read a small haiku that said, like goodwill and understanding walk through the door. What more is required? I immediately thought of you, Shipley. Anyway, good luck with your book. You won't be dead. Yeah, well, I was moved. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Peter.